Hey guys, welcome back to Eileen's World. I know it's been a very long time since I posted a video, but I have a life update. I am taking a year off to travel the world and my first stop is Marrakesh. So if you're nosy and want to find out how I spent two full days in Marrakesh before heading off to the Sahara Desert, then make sure you just keep on watching. Let's go over some of the basics. We flew into Marrakesh Minar Airport in early September 2022. At the time of this trip, the only COVID-related requirement was to fill out a contact tracing form. This form can be printed and completed ahead of time or upon arrival. Even though the custom line looked very long, it only took about 30 minutes for us to get through. If you're coming from the US, there are no visas required to enter. Rideshare apps are not available in the city. We didn't want to deal with the headache of getting a taxi, so we arranged for a driver through our Riyadh to pick us up for $20. Later, we learned that there is a fixed rate to and from the airport from the Medina. It should be 70 to 100 dirhams, or 7 to $10, depending on the size of the taxi. Small taxis fit up to three people, and large taxis fit up to six. The best part is that the Medina is only 15 minutes away from the airport. Make sure to bring a lot of cash, especially if you plan on shopping in the Medina or visiting a museum. They tend to be cash only. Restaurants and hotels are more likely to accept credit card. We exchanged our cash before we left the airport since we were afraid that ATMs wouldn't be easily available. But I did see a few inside the Medina and in the new city as well. We booked our stay in a Riyadh, which is a traditional guest house with a central courtyard. There are many Riyadh options inside of the Medina and most of them will include a free breakfast and dinner for an additional charge. We really enjoyed our stay at Riyadh Aya. The rooms were spacious, the staff was welcoming and helpful, and the food was very authentic. Even though it was in the middle of the Medina, it was very quiet during the day and evening, so it was a great escape for us. It's time for the room tour. We are on the third floor. No elevators, just stairs. There's a little seating area, a bed for two. Here's the bathroom. Hello. We got some Q-tips. Got some soap. Cool sink. Oh, look, I guess there's bags if we want to use it for something. Here is hair dryer, toilet, towels. And the shower. Very spacious. So quaint. And there's a little pool. There's the pool area. There's some lounge chairs. Once we settled in, it was already dinner time, so we decided to explore the Medina and find some food. I must admit, I chose this restaurant for its decor. It was very modern looking, the decor was on point, and they even had a rooftop terrace for us to dine in. We ordered the sweet colada mocktail, the pumpkin hummus, and the kofte plate. Keep in mind, alcohol is not commonly offered in restaurants, and if it is available, it's quite pricey. Ta-da! This is our pumpkin hummus with crushed hazelnuts and this is the kofta. The food was good, nothing mind-blowing. The portions are not very big and the prices are relative to most of the touristic restaurants around the Medina. If anything, come here, sit in the rooftop and enjoy a mocktail. So as we were walking through the Medina, we made our way to uh, Gemma El Fina Square which had a lot going on. There's a lot of fruit juice stands, there's a lot of vendors, there's a lot of shops, there's a lot of people, people performing, and uh, Jose did get stopped by one of them because he recorded their little musical performance for how long? Two seconds. Two seconds, and he's like, hey, 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 asking for money, so just be mindful of that. And then we had to get some water, which was the challenge of the day because we didn't know how much we would have to pay for it. We ended up going to a little shop around the corner from our Riyadh. So we got this 12 pack of Aquafina. 
and a bottle of Coke for about $5. And you know, there's no prices on these things. You just ask them how much and they just, they just tell you, or they'll type it in a calculator and let you know. So it's up to you if you want to bargain or not. I think it's reasonable, but Jose's convinced that we can get it for half the price one, whenever we're done with this. Tomorrow's going to be our first full day in Marrakesh. We don't have much planned, but there are a couple things that we know we have to see since we only have really two full days here. And then on the third day, we are going on a Sahara camping, glamping trip. Three days, two nights. So yeah, it's time to sleep. I'm tired. I need to get rested for this year off journey. One more thing before I sign off on our half day, quarter day here. Let's talk about our first impressions of Marrakesh. Well, I think it could be a lot more overwhelming, but there's a lot of mopeds and cars swishing by. And you know, we've been warned to not have our cameras or phones out or just be mindful because they could get swiped. So I was holding on to my camera and my phone for dear life, my hands were sweating. Surprisingly, not too many people like haggling us, you know, we bought a juice smoothie for $2 and with that came a photo op, you know? So I guess we paid for that photo op. I can see it being very overwhelming, stressful. Yeah, it was good. I think we came prepared. You know, we watched a ton of YouTube videos prepping us for the, our visit here. And obviously this place is like a huge tourist attraction. I'm excited to see how it's gonna be. See you guys tomorrow. Just a five minute walk from our Riyadh, we started our day at the Museum of Confluences, which is also known as Dar El Bacha. It was once a palace designed with Moroccan architecture, and it's now a museum with exhibits dedicated to Islamic art and home to Bacha coffee room and boutique. Okay, we just bought our tickets. They were 60 dirhams each, so $6 per person. And you can use the same ticket if you wanna go into the cafe as well. But if you don't want to go to the museum, you just want to the cafe, then you have to pay uh, 10 dirhams, which is a dollar. Named after the palace itself, this coffee room has over 200 Arabica coffees to choose from, along with sweet and savory dishes. We ordered the Palais set menu from their afternoon coffee selection for 250 dirhams or $25. This menu included a coffee, fresh fruit juice, slice of cake, seasonal fruit, pastry from the trolley, and their Liegeois coffee, which is a dessert made from coffee, coffee ice cream, Chantilly cream, and shortbread. All right, our peach juice has arrived, our milfun, milfun, our lemon cakes, and my coffee. Here we have the cream for the coffee. Last but not least is our fruit salad. I'm like, isn't this like a work of art? I was blown away with everything about this place. The decor, the service, the food, and the price cannot be beat. It was truly one of the highlights of my trip. Be prepared to wait. Many people visit this museum just to go to the cafe. We came on a Monday afternoon and waited about 20 minutes with two parties ahead of us. Once we left, there was even a longer wait time. The cafe was definitely the highlight of this museum. Unless you're very interested in Islamic art or architecture, I would skip the museum and just pay the 10 dirhams to visit the cafe. That ticket alone will allow you to see the courtyard and the orange trees, which is the most beautiful part of the museum. Anyway. We are making our way to Jardin Majorelle, which is about a 24 minute walk from um, the museum that we just came from. So the trick to crossing is just to close your eyes, say a prayer, <laughs> and cross. I found a Carrefour, and if you guys know, anytime I go somewhere, my favorite place is to check out the supermarket. For Jose, it's important that we go here because that way he knows what the real prices are of things that we buy. Like water, like let's see how much water is. So we have some Pringles, we have ketchup flavored, it's 22 dirhams, so it's about $2.20. Um, no other really special flavors, oh, hot and spicy, I don't think we have hot and spicy back home. Oh, we have some Lay's, we have chili and lemon, 
that's unique a dollar 40 for a bag so we found the exact same water that we bought yesterday at the market the little corner store actually and it's 2.85 dirhams per bottle times 12 so let's round it up let's do three times so it's gonna be 36 dirhams 360 and we paid four dollars oh we only paid like a dollar more it's not so bad okay if you're gonna get water in morocco marrakesh keep in mind that it should cost about 20 to 30 cents a bottle this is three dirhams so 30 cents fyi don't be duped like us. <laughs> After our pit stop at Carrefour, we made it to Jardin Majorelle. Here is the line, which looks long, but then again, it doesn't, ah, there's a fly on me, but it doesn't seem that long. So let's see how long the wait is. Despite the longish looking line, we only had to wait for a couple minutes. Tickets to enter the garden alone is 120 dirhams or $12. This garden is located in Guiliz, the new city outside of the Medina, and it was purchased and restored by Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger in the 80s, and it is also best known for its cobalt blue color, which is named Blue Majorelle after the garden's designer. Out of all of the museums and palaces that I've visited during my stay in Marrakesh, this one was my absolute favorite. The garden is well maintained and it's a peaceful place away from the chaos of the city. And it doesn't hurt that there's a photo op every corner that you turn. You cannot miss this place if you are visiting Marrakesh. Our food has arrived at Café Majorelle. This is the jus du jour, which has pêche, mang, and fraises which is peach, mango, and strawberries. And then we got the Moroccan crepes, which look like this. Oh, they're hot. Uh, this makes me itch. Woo! Um, <laughs> and then here's the butter and honey that it comes with. There are plenty of options available, whether you just want a drink, a small bite, or a full meal. The prices are comparable to any other restaurant catering to tourists in the city. So if you're already in Jardin Majorelle, it's worth visiting Cafe Majorelle as well. And 100 meters down from Jardin Majorelle is the Musée Yves Saint Laurent, Marrakesh, which is ah, closed until the 17th. Let's see if we can get a sneak peek inside. I'll reach my gimbal through this. Can you see? Oh, boo, it's closed. While we were outside the Medina, or the old city, we walked around Guiliz, which is considered the new city. Here you'll find Western style malls, many restaurants, and the Jardin Majorelle. So we're at Carrefour again, but this is the Carrefour Gourmet, and it's located inside of a mall in the new part, new city. Look, a whole liter of Jus d'orange fresh squeeze for 21.95 dirhams. Look at the size of this. Wow. So good. I rate this a six out of five. On our way back into the Medina, we passed by the Ketubia Mosque. This is the largest mosque in Marrakesh, and unless you are Muslim, you will have to admire it from the outside like us. Here is a glimpse of Gemma Elfina, the main square of Marrakesh where you'll see both locals and tourists. Here you'll find juice and fruit vendors, street performers, monkey on leashes, and snake charmers just to name a few. It is very hectic, especially at night with people and scooters just whizzing by. And if you are going to watch or record any street performers, be ready to spare some money because they will get very insistent if you don't. And most importantly, be mindful of your surroundings and belongings, especially amongst the crowds. These two kids you see here, the one in the blue shirt on the bike and the one in the white shirt, followed us all the way from the Medina, through the maze of the souks, and all the way back to our Riyadh. Luckily, nothing was lost and we were able to get rid of them once we made it back to our Riyadh.
Located just a couple minutes from Riyadh, Simple has a pretty rooftop dining area where you can enjoy traditional Moroccan food and look at the stars above you. Okay, this is my jus de banane. I keep on seeing banana juice everywhere that we go, so I'm really curious as to what it tastes like. It's like banana mixed with orange juice. Jose got the kefta. So we have three meat skewers, some french fries, uh, some rice, and a little uh, carrot salad. My chicken pastilla is here. It's uh, like a chicken pastry. And the guy said it was a good choice, so let's see. Oh, it's dense. Let's see what it looks like. It's like a flaky crust on the outside, chicken on the inside. It's a little bit sweet too, like the, like the underneath has sugar. While the beef kefta was definitely a miss, the meat was so dry, the chicken pastilla was delicious and something you must try if you are visiting Morocco. We made it to breakfast today. And this is what our spread is. We have a carafe of coffee. We have some fresh squeezed orange juice, yogurt, some cheese, some bread. And this is like a French toast looking thing. We have butter, marmalade, honey, cream cheese, strawberry marmalade, sugar cubes. After breakfast in our Riyadh, we made our way through the Medina to Souk Simarin. This souk is considered to be the main artery of all the souks. Here you'll find stalls of lanterns, teapots, pottery, and textiles. After the souk and on our way to Bahia Palace, we found the Slot Al-Azama Synagogue in the Old Jewish Quarter. This is one of the best known synagogues in Marrakesh, and for 10 dirhams or $1, you can learn about the history of Judaism in Marrakesh. This place is very small and well-maintained and definitely worth the entry price. All right, so this is the entrance of the Palais Bahia. Despite what Google Maps may say, the other side is not the entrance. Just follow the perimeter or just look for uh, Bahia Palace entrance on Google Maps. And that's how you get here. The entrance fee was 70 dirhams or $7. And this place was once a palace in the mid 19th century. I was pretty underwhelmed with the palace. The rooms were empty and some areas were under renovation. And truthfully, after a while, all of these courtyards and these palaces and museums start to look the same to me. I'm starting to get tired of people shouting directions at us every time I pull out my phone or, or try to figure out just a place to stop so that we can find direction. I'm getting annoyed. We are at Cafe Casba, which we found on Google. Has good reviews. Has a nice rooftop terrace. And this beautiful view. I ordered a watermelon juice. Doesn't this look so delicious? I've been on a juice kick. I had avocado juice, watermelon juice, mixed juice, banana juice. Peach juice yesterday at the Cafe Bacha was very good. My chicken skewers are here. They come hanging. And it comes with vegetables and some hummus. This was 90 dirhams, so about $9. And Jose got an omelet with mushroom and onions. This was about 60 dirhams, so it was about six dollars. We just finished having lunch at Cosma Cafe and we sat up there in the rooftop terrace, which was really nice. 
kind of sunny, so try to find a spot that isn't, you know, sunny. Find a nice spot with shade. The food was really tasty. Uh, just keep in mind that these are tourist prices, so our meal is about $20, which, you know, in the scheme of everything isn't a lot, but it definitely is expensive for Marrakesh. Okay, this wasn't part of our plan, but since we were in the neighborhood, we are now at the Balia Palace, which cost us 70 dirhams, so $7 per person, which is the cost pretty much to get to any of these points of interest. It was such a maze to get here. I'm hot, I'm tired. I'm tired of being harassed by the people in the street. I'm tired of walking through the maze and finding dead ends <laughs> and people trying to help you and telling you things are closed or to go into their store. This is exhausting. This combined with the heat. All right, first stop is to discover the labyrinth of the Badi Palace. I hope it's not too hot or claustrophobic. This palace was built in the 16th century to display the Sultan's wealth and power. Today, you can still find the garden walls and the Oran orchards still standing. There are different exhibits to explore around the palace, a short informative video showing you what the palace once looked like, and a labyrinth underneath. But the most impressive may be the four sunken gardens in the middle of the courtyard. Right now, we are at Café de France. It's a restaurant, rooftop, terrace that overlooks the Gemma Elfina. Uh, I bet the view here at night is probably pretty cool. Um, this is also the meeting spot for our three-day Sahara adventure that starts tomorrow. And just sat down, I ordered an orange juice because I'm so hot. I have a headache from the heat. I'm thirsty. Um, and Jose really wanted ice cream, so we've ordered an ice cream. Let's see how it is. I'm sitting here and I'm reading the reviews on Google and they're just so funny because people are just claiming that it's cash only but they don't give you the full change back they try to save some for saying that it's their tip so we'll see if that's true or not here is my orange juice i think this was 25 dirhams so 250. our dessert has arrived so we got the pesh melba which is the peach melba do yourself a favor and avoid cafe de france I was right, they did try to overcharge us when it was time to pay for the bill. I mean, we, only, we only ordered an ice cream and an orange juice, which was 80 dirhams. But then when I went to go pay, the guy said 90. And I said, ah, 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 no, 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 no. And so we made him bring back the menu and then he brought the menu back and it was like, oh, okay, sorry, yeah, it was. On our last night in Marrakesh, we decided to have a traditional Moroccan dinner in our Riyadh. I'm having my first alcoholic beverage since I've been here. I am having Casablanca Premium Beer, which is the original lager from Morocco. It was 20 additional dollars per person for a three course meal, not including drinks. We started with some traditional Moroccan salads and bread. The main course was a chicken, lemon, and olive tagine, and we ended the meal with some Moroccan pastries and tea. And that concludes our quick trip into Marrakesh. Even though we were only there for two full days, we definitely were able to see many of the musty places and get a good vibe of the city. If you plan on visiting Marrakesh or have any questions about the city, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for my three-day camping trip into the Sahara Desert.